so friends next we are going to learn about the new model under the dividend relevance model and that is what is known as Gordon's model so in the previous lecture we saw about Walter's model and uh, we have seen what are the conclusions that you are you can take from Walter's model now we are going to learn about Gordon's model okay now like Walter's model in Gordon's model also there are certain assumptions so we'll have to see the assumptions one by one okay so the first assumption is that the firm is an all equity firm that means it doesn't have any the firm does not have any debt component so if there is any debt component then this model cannot be applied okay now next internal rate of return you all know what is the internal rate of return internal rate of return should remain constant okay which means whenever the company invests the retained earnings or its equity funds into the projects the internal rate of return that the company is generating from such, pro uh, for such projects will remain constant always. Okay, next K cost of equity will remain constant. Then retention ratio. Okay, retention ratio means it is the, the proportion of the profits, annual profits that will be retained by the company. Okay, and we know that it is nothing but 100 minus dividend payout ratio. And this model says that once the retention ratio is fixed, it remains constant always. Okay, it doesn't change year by year or period by period. So once you fix the retention ratio to be 60%, that 60% will be constant or it will be fixed throughout the period. Now the next one, growth rate, growth rate G. Growth rate, the formula for growth rate uh, G is equal to B into R. We have already learned about it. Okay, B is nothing but the retention ratio, ratio and R is the return on capital employed and this growth rate also remains constant okay now next cost of equity is greater than growth rate okay so cost of equity is greater than uh, growth rate so growth rate if it is five percent the cost of equity has to be higher than five percent they could uh, this model cannot be applied in a situation where the cost of equity is less than the growth rate okay so that is not uh, possible Okay, so this is another assumption KE should be greater than G because if you see the formula, there is a formula that denominator in this formula is KE minus G. Okay, so if KE is greater than G, you will get a positive figure. But if it is reverse, this will end up in a negative figure, which is absurd, which will give you an absurd value. So if this model have to apply, then KE have to be greater than G so that KE minus G will be a positive figure. Okay, and the last one, all investment proposals of the firm are to be financed through retained earnings only. So most of these assumptions are same or common as the in that in the case of Walters model. But of course there are few models uh, for a few uh, uh, separate uh, uh, assumptions like A should be greater than G etc etc. Okay. Now we have to see what is the formula. Okay. What is the the formula to be applied. So as per this Gordon's model. as per the Gordon's model okay so the price per share which is something but P0 is equal to E1 into 1 minus B divided by KE minus BR okay so let's see what are this uh, E1 E1 is nothing but your what is E1? E1 is EPS earnings per share okay now what is B? B is nothing but retention ratio retention ratio so 1 minus B is nothing but it is the dividend payout ratio 1 minus B is nothing but dividend payout ratio okay now KE is the cost of equity and BR is nothing but growth rate okay so what is this E1 is EPS EPS into dividend payout ratio 1 minus B is nothing but dividend payout ratio okay what is this EPS into dividend payout ratio this is nothing but your dividend or DPS 
this is nothing but dividend per share or d1 okay this is d1 okay so you got uh, the numerator as d1 now what is k k is cost of equity and what is br br is nothing but g so this formula is nothing but p0 is equal to d1 divided by ke minus c this is something which we have already learned okay in your second chapter so it is the same formula but it is written in a different manner okay so this is for your understanding for for exam purposes you have to write this formula okay e1 into 1 minus b divided by ke minus br okay so this is the formula now what is this gordon's model says the gordon's model says that when irr is greater than cost of capital when irr irr means it is the r is greater than cost of capital that is ke okay the price per share increases the price per share increases and dividend payout decreases okay so the conclusion will be like the conclusion so in a in the case of a growth company in case of growth company r will be k greater than ke and hence optimum dividend payout this is nil o zero now in a constant company that is r is greater than ke so it is an indifference point so no optimum dividend payout ratio which means whatever be the dividend that you are paying or whatever dividend ratio you are following that is indifferent but in case of declining company declining company is characterized by r is less than ke so optimum dividend payout ratio is 100 percent so if r is less than ke then you have to pay the entire amount as dividend okay so this is all about the uh, the uh, principles now we'll have to do let's uh, do some problems okay so the following figures are collected from annual report of xyz limited now net profit is given to be 30 lakhs outstanding 12 percent preference shares it is 100 lakhs Number of equity shares 3 lakhs, return on investment 20%, cost of capital 16%, calculate the price per share using Gordon's model when dividend payout is 25%, 50% and 100%. Okay, so this is the same problem which we have done under Walter's model. The same one we are going to do here again. So, so if you see, this is question number 6. Net profit is equal to 30 lakhs less preference dividend is let's say it's uh, preference dividend is going to be 12 percent preference shares of rupees 100, 100 lakhs so 100 lakhs into 100, 12 percent so that is 12 lakh so 
earnings to equity shareholders eighteen lakhs then EPS is equal to eighteen lakhs divided by what is the number of shares? Number of shares is three lakhs. So that is rupees six per share. Okay. Now you have to compute the value per share. So price per share. P0 is equal to E1 into 1 minus V divided by KE minus BR. Okay, so the first one, first case dividend payout is 25%. Twenty-five percent. So P0 is equal to E1 is 6 into 1 minus B. B is dividend payout. So uh, it should be B is the retention ratio. So B is 75 percent here. So 1 minus 0 0.75 divided by K is how much 16 or 0.16 minus b into r b is 0 0.75 and r is 0 0.2 okay so that is equal to 6 into 0 0.25 6 into 0 0.25 is 1.5 divided by 0 0.16 minus 0 0.15 so that will give you a value of rupees 150 per share. Now next one, dividend payout ratio is 50 percent. Dividend ratio is 50 percent. So P0 is equal to 6 into 1 minus 0 0.50 divided by 0 0.16 into 0 0.50 into 0 0.2 that is equal to 3 divided by 0 0.16 sorry this is minus minus 0 0.5 into 0 0.2 is 0 0.10 so that is rupees 50 per share see just because the dividend payout ratio has doubled your share price is coming down by one third okay so when dividend payout is 100 percent payout is 100 percent p0 is equal to okay p0 is equal to 6 into dividend payout is 100 percent so total 1 okay and b is 0 1 minus 0 divided by 0 0.16 minus okay David, uh, that uh, b is 0 0.0 into 0 0.2 so that is 6 into 1 6 divided by 0 0.16 that is equal to rupees 37.50 so what is the conclusion there are two conclusions one is the dividend payout ratio as the dividend payout ratio changes your share price also changes so the dividend payout ratio has a significance or has an effect on the price share price okay one second thing when since r is greater than k since r is greater than k as the dividend payout ratio increases dividend payout ratio increases what happens the value or share decreases the value per share decreases 
because ideally the entire amount have to be reinvested and the DPS have to be uh, zero okay or the dividend payout ratio have to be zero so this is all about this problem now let's do one more problem okay let's take uh, okay 9.36 study material taking an example from three different firms that is growth normal and declining calculate the share price using Gordon's model so you have to use the Gordon's model so you have the R then cost of capital is given then um, earnings per share is given return earnings is given 1 minus B or dividend payout ratio is given so it's a very small problem you just need to take the necessary values and uh, do the calculation over here okay Okay, so let's do the problem. So you have K is 1. R is greater than K. Okay, you have P0 is equal to E1. E1 is EPS. EPS in the first case is 10. Then 1 minus B. B is the, retain, the retention ratio. So, 1 minus B is 0.4, then KE, KE is 0 0.10 minus, okay, B into R, B is 0.6 and uh, R is 0.15. So, that will give you how much? It will be like uh, 10 into 0.4 will be 4 divided by 0 0.10 minus okay 0.6 into 0.15 that is 0 0.09 so that is that is 4 divided by 0 0.01 4 divided by 0 0.01 that is so base 400 per share Now, 2, okay, R is equal to K, R is equal to K means P0 is equal to EPS is 10 into 1 minus B is 0 0.4, okay, divided by point K is 0 0.10 minus B is 0.6 into g the uh, uh, g uh, or r is b r r is how much 0 0.10 so that is 4 divided by 0 0.10 minus 0 0.6 into 0 0.1 that is 0 0.06 4 divided by 0 0.1 minus 0 0.06 that is 0 0.04 hundred per share now case 3 R is less than K P0 is equal to okay 1 minus b that is point uh, so 10 into 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.10 minus again b b is 0 0.6 and r r is 8 percent Four divided by point zero point six into point zero eight 
okay so point one zero minus point zero four eight that is four divided by point one minus point zero four eight that is rupees seventy six point nine two so this is the value per share okay calculate the share price using Gordon's model we have calculated so that's all about this problem now let's move to the next problem that is question number eight so let's read the question number eight so question number eight uh, is uh, for comparing or ca calculating both Walters model and Gordon's model and you need to compare the value under Walters model and Gordon's model okay so one is EPS is 60 capitalization rate is given return on investment is given dividend payout ratio is given compute the price per share using Walters model what should be the optimum dividend payout ratio as per the Gordon's model okay so this is the formula now okay so let's do the problem first Walters model Walters model so P what is the formula for Walters model D into R by K E E minus T all divided by K -E. so what is D D is dividend uh, per share what is dividend per share dividend per, per share is uh, is to be computed EPS is 60 and dividend payout ratio is 30 okay so D is EPS into dividend payout ratio so that is 60 into 30 percent that is 18 so that is 18 plus what is r r is point uh, 25 and ke is point 0.15 so r is point 0.25 divided by point 0.15 okay e is 60 d is 18 divided by 0.15 so that is 18 plus so 60 minus 18 is 42 into 0.25 divided by 0.15 so that is 70 divided by 0.15 that is 88 divided by 0.15 that is 586.67 So this is as per which model Walters model now what is the next uh, question you need to find out what is the optimum dividend payout ratio per share under dividends Gordon model so for this you don't have to find out the value per share what you just need to do is you see what is R what is R R is 25 percent and what is K K is 15 so r is greater than ke if r is greater than ke the optimum dividend payout ratio under gordon's model is zero okay so the optimum uh, dividend payout ratio is zero in this case okay so uh, that's there now uh, if so you don't have the g okay so let's find out the value per share under gordon's model also okay Gordon's model okay let's do the calculation also so P0 is equal to E1 into 1 minus P divided by KE minus BR 
what is E1? E1 is EPS and uh, EPS is 60 minus what is 1 minus B? 1 minus B is dividend payout ratio. So, that is 60 into 30 percent divided by what is KE? KE is uh, given to be 15 percentage and what is B? B is the retention ratio. Retention ratio B is 1 minus 0.3 which is the dividend payout ratio that is 0.7. So, 0.7 into what is R? R is the return on investment that is 0.25. So, that is equal to 18 divided by 0.15 minus 0 0.7 into 0 0.25. 0 0.7 into 0.25 is 0 0.175. Okay. So, Point two five into point seven. Okay, so here if you see, you are going to get uh, a value. Okay, so here G is seventeen point five percentage, and K E is given to be fifteen percentage. So that is eighteen divided by minus. Okay, point one five minus point. 0.175 that is minus 0 0.025 so we have already learned one assumption okay and what was that assumption that assumption was k should always be greater than g but if you see the calculation here k is 50 15 percent and g is 17.5 percent so here since k is greater than sorry k is less than G or BR, okay, Gordon's model cannot be used. So, this is a case where there is a negative denominator and you can't do the calculation, okay. So, no result. I hope that's clear. So, we have learned two models under dividend relevance model one is Walter's model and the other one is the Gordon's model okay and we have learned the formula for computing the share in each cases also okay